G'day guys, Toast20 here, welcome back to Sunset City. Well, at least it will be a city, it's not quite a city yet, in fact it is only the second episode and we've only just begun. And we might have only just begun, but man, we've already hit a couple of snags that we absolutely need to fix up before we start building. In fact, we're still in map editor and we need to fix these problems before we get into the save game. Our main city is going to be based on the city of Miami. It's going to sit in this location down here. And in fact, our very first problem is that I need to change where the downtown is going to sit. It's not going to sit in that area anymore. And then we've also got a bunch of these non-intersections that I need to turn into intersections. But before we get to those two things, we've got a much bigger problem. So because we are working on an island, we don't have any outside connections, at least not yet. Yeah, of course, I could just drag out a bridge to the great beyond, but I don't really want to do that. I would rather see vehicles just kind of appear on the map. Now, I could just have some sort of harbor that sits down here, which, of course, we will eventually do, and an airport that we will do at some point as well. But I don't really want to do that either. At least I don't want to rely on it. I want to have a road connection somewhere out somewhere. <laughs> it's going to be somewhere. So what's my solution to this? How do I get people to the map without seeing any sort of road connection to the great beyond? Well, let's just fly out to the corner of the map, like right out into the fog. Can't see anything, good. Let's just turn off the clouds and off the fog. There we go. We've got just a little outside connection, just a little island that is hidden by all the edge fog. We've got one up in that corner. And then all the way down here, we've got another one. And then if you look underground, you can see where the tunnels lead into the map. So the idea is to have some sort of hidden tunnel so that it doesn't really look like there is some sort of outside connection, but there are vehicles entering our map. All right, great, sorted. Well, look, here's the thing. Florida only has two tunnels, one that sits in Miami, and there is another one that goes underneath this river here. So that's my idea. I'm going to try and hide those tunnels. They're going to sneak their way up into the map through some sort of highway connection. That's sort of why I'm thinking about changing where my downtown's going to sit because it needs to actually fit around this outside connection. Uh, the other problem is, is that we're going to be directing a lot of heavy traffic directly from outside connection to our downtown. So whatever we build down here has to be pretty solid. Uh, and that goes for our other highway connection, which I'm still a little bit confused about what I'm going to be doing with, but I've got a bit of an idea. But anyway, let's start with this one down here. The center of downtown Miami is situated around this river, which I would like to do something pretty similar. I had anticipated for it to be in this area, but I actually don't think that this is a great location for it anymore. More about, I think it's just like too close to this area. I think we should probably extend a bit further up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this and uh, let's change, let's change where that river is going to sit and where the downtown is going to be. So I'm just rethinking some of these rivers just so that they're in slightly better locations, giving us a bit more room for our downtown. I'm trying to get this one to be as thin as possible. There are a bunch of rivers in Miami and I want to try and capture even the smallest ones, which can be a little bit tricky in city skylines because, I mean, as you can see, they don't really allow for tiny rivers like that. So I am going to try really, really hard to get just minimal water flow through here without just having some sort of blockage like that. That's probably as good as it gets. And in map editor, the water flow seems to be a little bit off as well. So I reckon that'll look a little bit better once we get into the save game. So the reason why I've done that is because it gives us a little bit more space to build what I would like to be a fairly big interchange right here that's gonna feed into this area, giving access to our outside connection, going into our port and also our harbor and to our area over here, which is Gonna be pretty populated. It's not a big space, but it's gonna be pretty populated. The tunnel in Miami serves as this direct access to the highway and Dodge Island, which is this island that has this harbor and port on it. So it's a pretty essential way of getting cargo in and out of the city, but also passengers. Now, the really cool thing is that mine's gonna be serving a pretty similar purpose. As they go through this tunnel and heading towards our version of Dodge Island, they're gonna be 
Look, potentially there'll be an access point to Dodge Island through that tunnel, but they are going to be going into the outside connection, which is going to be giving off the same impression, which is super cool. So like I said, mine's going to be sitting around here and then it's going to be connecting up to this interchange, which I would like to be a pretty substantial stack interchange. Now, if you've been following along with the channel for a while, you know that I can't build these things. I always make them look super ugly and I always miss a couple of connections. So I'm going to take the easy way out and use a pre-built one from people who know how to build these things. I did want a mega interchange, but it could be potentially a little bit too large. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use move it and I'm going to just move over some of these nodes just to make it a little bit smaller in areas. And hopefully that's going to help with a bit of the scale Jeez, it's going to take a little while to do, but I reckon it's going to definitely be worth it. So the process of making this interchange work within this city is just a matter of grabbing some of these nodes and segments with Move It and just scaling down this interchange a little bit because it was just a little bit too big. So we are just scaling things down. And then I can also grab some of these highways and point them into the direction that we want them to go and just shuffling things around and making it look a little bit more realistic because as you change one thing, then you've got to change the other so that it does sort of work. And I'm sure a lot of people are probably looking at this and thinking, hey, just wouldn't it be easier if you made your own interchange from scratch? And my response would be, yeah, it actually would be a lot easier. In fact, by the time I finished this, I realized that I changed the interchange so much, it was no longer right. And I had to demolish the whole thing and start from scratch. And I guess maybe saying starting from scratch is a little bit of an exaggeration. We do have this tiny little segment over here that we did do, and I've changed a couple of little islands over on the side, but um, for the most part, yeah, we're pretty much back at square one. And I know it's a bit ridiculous to get hung up on an interchange like this, but I would really like to try and capture how these things look. There's a bunch in Miami and I'm just gonna build the one and I wanna try and capture as much of how these things look as possible. So it is really important that we try and build this thing exactly how I imagine it to look. I think that's probably going to be a better spot for it because we've got more room, we've got more land on either side and we can fit in some suburbs around it and all that sort of stuff. I think what's tricky as well is that I wouldn't have started with these highways and it's only because we've got that outside connection to worry about so close to the downtown that I do have to kind of worry about these at the moment and figure out whereabouts they're going to sit. I reckon we'll have enough room for this to be elevated all through these suburbs uh, because Miami is surrounded by that highway, that elevated highway that I would also like to capture. But then going into this area around here, I think we're probably just going to leave it because I know we've got this stretch of highway. But my plans for this is actually to turn it into more of a main road uh, rather than this highway. But for now, because we are still within map editor, I'm just going to leave it like that. And then similar story with this guy, I reckon we're gonna probably keep it as a main road. So there'll be intersections on this rather than it being a highway. But now I'm just gonna drag it out as a highway and we can convert it a little later on down the track. And here we go for round two, $2.20 versus the interchange. This time though, I am off to a cracking start, I must say, because building thing from scratch probably should have been the thing that I had done from the get go. Scenes as we are trying to build this thing to a particular scale and also trying to make it look a particular way. I should have just done this from the very beginning. And this was definitely a much easier process than I had anticipated. Usually when I try to build these things, I'll take inspiration from ones from real life. But this time around, I decided to build it exactly how I saw it from Google Earth. And although things are gonna change and I anticipate the interchange changing when we start landscaping the land around it, not to mention when we actually start building some stuff around, we will of course put some extra ramps in so that people can access it from different points. But I mean, even just copying the way that this thing looks from the very beginning, as I starts to raise and lower and even add some extra ramps, you can start to see that this thing is taking its own shape. Particularly because I am trying to make the elevation work. We have so many different layers here. I think there might be about four or five layers of, uh, of highway that I are pretty much meeting at the same point. And because of that, I had to shuffle around some of the nodes so that we've got these interesting segments that are much wider in areas than they are 
from the one that I'm trying to copy. So it really just took on its own shape and I'm really glad it did because it really just gives its own personality and I think this is going to be super cool when we start detailing around it as well. But the levels and clearance was definitely one of the hardest parts about this because it is a scaled down interchange, it's not massive. If I was to have more space, then I could provide more clearance for some of the vehicles traveling underneath some of the segments. But unfortunately, I don't really have the space. So I had to be a bit clever with the way that this thing looked and the way that the elevated sections traveled over one another. Yeah, definitely made it look a particular way. And I think that this is probably the best size that we can go for. It is pretty tricky on this map to go for scale, but also keeping things fairly realistic. Uh, you know, in terms of the rest of the buildings that are going to be placed around here. If you can imagine, if we're going to have a house next to this interchange, I don't think it's going to look too disproportioned. In fact, just to have a look, I mean, that's the size of a house. This is the size of an interchange. So I think that the scale is probably pretty bang on. But then it's also not too massive compared to the rest of the map or the area. And I do want this to be a bit of a focal point. I mean, it's a bit sad when we have a interchange for a focal point, but uh, let's uh, let's move on because as you can already tell that we are completely sidetracked. I was uh, meant to be focusing on outside connections and so far all we've done is build one interchange that I didn't anticipate building. So we're off to a crack and start. How are we gonna get the outside connection connected up to the main highway? Now, the problem is, is that I built this so that I could connect this part up to this part, but uh, look, I mean, that's kind of not going to happen anymore because we've got grander plans for that highway. So we're going to have to do something a little bit different. Now, I do like this part because this is going to be a bit more of a main road that's going to be connected up to the downtown. Like, there could potentially be an intersection here with traffic lights. I haven't really decided yet, but could potentially do that. I think if we're going to build anything in terms of some sort of interchange, it's probably going to be around here and it should probably feed into the downtown as well. These are gonna act as more planning roads. They're just here purely so I can get a bit of an idea of where some of these main roads are gonna sit. And then we can think about these highways. I'm actually building in a way that I don't usually like to build. I think that if you're gonna build a city, it should probably start with these main roads rather than the highways. And then you should build the highways kind of uh, going in and out of these roads and interacting with the city in that way. Uh, but I am sort of trying to, well, I mean, I'm sort of forced into these highways because of our uh, unusual circumstance of the outside connection. So that's kind of the way we're doing it. Uh, I'm going to leave it like that because I think that's sort of a similar path to what I'm thinking. And if it's going to go like that, then I guess this road doesn't really need to go in this direction. Instead, this road could potentially be something that goes out towards here and connects up to this highway. And I'm actually looking at the path of these roads more than anything else. So I'm trying to think why were these roads established? Why is this road now a main road or highway? And how important is it? I guess these are the most important roads and I wanna make sure that they really feel that way. So this is actually making a lot of sense. I mean, if you were to think about it, this highway is going to stretch towards this area, which is a very important road. And it is a very important road because it even stretches all the way out beyond here. And that is about as important as it gets. So I think even having it follow this path is absolutely perfect. And this road as well, it follows all the way out towards the rest of these areas, which are going to be pretty important parts of the map. And we've also got this heading towards these keys. So again, very, very important. Now, the difficult thing with this highway is that because it is elevated and because it is a very large highway, it has five lanes and it goes through the heart of the downtown. I have to transition it to an area that is the complete opposite. It travels to a very, very small highway and it heads to an area that's going to be pretty, you know, pretty bare. It's going to be a lot of agriculture and the edge of the city. So we have to try and figure out the best way to transition that. Not to mention that this is an elevated highway. So I'm imagining that this was just built over the top of suburbs and over the top of pre-existing stuff rather than a road that's been upgraded over time. 
In real life, Miami, we have this highway that is stretching in the same direction and we're making a pretty similar connection to the one that we've created. Although the space is a lot different, we have less space to do it and we have to sort of imagine how the city is going to look as we work in this area. You know, building these highways first is not my preferred method. I would much rather build these afterwards in a way more realistic fashion for a place like this. But for now, it is fine and I think think that we can make some changes as we progress and as we see the city start to expand. But as you can see, I have sort of just tacked on that elevated highway to this main road that heads towards the Seminole Keys and then that road stretches all the way into downtown which I think would make a little bit more sense. It makes it feel more like a main road and then the elevated highway has been just attached over time. And then we are trying to figure out how we're going to get traffic smoothly running from our outside connection to our downtown and also to this elevated highway. So also gonna try and imagine what's gonna be around here. I don't really wanna build anything too massive because it's hard to figure out what the scale of everything else is gonna be like. So for now, this is what we've got. We're gonna build something that is, look, we're gonna have some, we're gonna have some traffic lights down here and we'll also probably have a little bit of traffic, but we're just gonna see how this thing works. I mean, it doesn't have to be the absolute smoothest transition ever but it does have to get traffic in and out of the city and to our outside connection. So let's just, let's just see how this bad boy operates under pressure. We'll have to see how that works at the end. But uh, real life Miami, we've got a pretty massive interchange that leads into the downtown and also stretches to Miami Beach. And I just don't really have the room, or at least I don't really know how much room I have for something like that at the moment. And it's really just a matter of waiting and seeing how this thing operates, but also just how it looks with the rest of the city because design plays a pretty big part in the way that I'm building everything. I don't want to just build something purely based on its functionality. I definitely prioritize the way something looks rather than the way that it actually functions. So of course, we're gonna have to put the interchange to the test at the end of the episode when we get into the save game and see the simulation run, but I think it's gonna work pretty well. I have designed it so that we do still have some traffic lights, but for the most part, I think that traffic flowing between the outside connections are gonna work pretty well. For instance, uh, I think most traffic coming from that outside connection is gonna make a right-hand turn, which is uninterrupted by any lights and as it goes through this one into the underpass, I think that's gonna flow just fine. Uh, the only, I think, well, you know, might not even have any traffic lights. Oh no, we definitely do. <laughs> we, can't, we can't not have traffic lights there. But anyway, we're actually up to building our outside connection. So our tunnel. Uh, so we've got to think about this because the tunnel in Miami is on its own separate island, which is pretty cool. I kind of want to do something similar, but I don't think I've got the space to do something like that. So instead, let's let's extend this out a little bit more so that, hmm, actually no, let's not do that. Let's, let's start with uh, the highway crossing this bay and we'll see how much room we have once we've constructed that. Uh, and then it's not really a bridge. I mean, there's areas that are a bridge, but most of it is just on its own little uh, little bank here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. It looks a bit weird because it's still in map editor, but uh, I think it's gonna look a lot better. And then we'll convert a couple of these segments into a bridge so that we can raise it up and give access to any boats that needs to travel underneath. Uh, even, that's probably enough because we don't have a huge amount of space. So let's just leave it at that. Uh, what I do need to do though, is I need to grab these pillars and sink them down. So we actually have some room for the, uh, the boat stacks to go underneath. And then this is the area that we're gonna have our underpass. So I reckon we could probably shift some of these nodes and probably do something like that. And geez, it's gonna be a tight fit, but I reckon we could probably make it work. Uh, I reckon two lane is going to be the way to go. And let's just see how we're going for space. But geez, it's gonna be pretty tight no matter what, but we will try and make it work. Uh, and I think these nodes are gonna look a lot better. Well, at least these segments are gonna look a lot better when I can actually get in here and use node controller. Geez, we are really pushing it for space. I'm gonna be pulling out the closest maneuvers here, like just splicing in those tunnel segments 
Uh, we might even have to look underground and get that one to go a little bit closer. It's not massively pretty, but it is working. And it is also one of those instances where I'm actually gonna change a lot of this when I get into the save game. And um, when I say a lot of it, I mean, I'm gonna probably convert these into different roads and we'll um, add in a key and all that. But for now, I just wanna see it work. I wanna see if the interchange is gonna work in the first place. Um, but what we can do in Map Editor, just a bit more before we move on, is I'm gonna lower this even further down and look underground and continue to lower this part because I always hate it when, I always hate it when these tunnels have this big bit up here. It looks much better when it's a bit more flush. And then you can also do this thing. Let's just drag it a bit closer. Is you get these nice and close. And I think that is a slightly better look. Yeah, not 100% happy with how this looks, but like I said, we're gonna revisit it uh, when I've got all my assets in the save game for now with the vanilla highways that's probably about as good as we're going to get it but yeah a couple of extra mods and i think that's going to look really nice uh, i'm going to remove these because now that we know that those roads are going to be sitting around there i can yeah i'll just move them but i'll leave that connection because we'll drag that out when we're in save game and so that's the first outside connection and then it goes all the way out towards this way and we've got our next spot, which is going to be an underground tunnel. And I think this one's gonna be a lot easier to actually pull off because it's literally just gonna be an underground connection to the highway that sits somewhere over there. Um, but basically the reason why this is gonna be an underground highway, not only because it's gonna be a way for us to get an outside connection, but I reckon we're gonna see some, well, I plan to have some sort of boat access going in here. I doubt it'll be a ferry, but It'd be cool to see some recreational boats coming in here, going into our uh, into our lake and just using this space because, you know, I think this will probably be where some suburbs are going to be too. So uh, they're going to need access. And I reckon we'll keep this as a bridge because I think this is probably where the town's going to sit or whatever we end up building here. But this highway definitely could, definitely can be something that's on the ground. So I'm going to pause it and then we can just do this and then we'll drop it underground. And I think that's about as easy as it's gonna get. And we'll look, we're gonna come back to this area and of course it's gonna be changing as we um, progress through the map. But for now, we're gonna just make our connection and we'll just know that this is an area that we're going to always have with this outside connection. <laughs> it's all the way over here, we're gonna drag it over. And even down the track, if we end up deciding to change where this highway sits, because I even think that it's probably a bit closer to the shoreline than I want it to be, I wouldn't mind it potentially going closer to the farmland. But yeah, if we end up changing where that sits, we can just reshuffle this. And um, you know, now that we've got these connections, we can just pop them in different locations. Well, as hoped, we have vehicles on our roads, which means our outside connections are absolutely working. Uh, I ended up going for three outside connections. We have the one that we were talking about before, our very first one, hidden over here in the distance. You can see vehicles entering and exiting our map. And I even decided to do two more. I've got one out there, and we've got another one way out towards that exit and entrance. And I think three is probably a good amount. Uh, I wanted to see vehicles heading in this direction from the get-go and likewise out this way. 
uh, and it's also meaning that we are seeing vehicles heading all the way through here even though our outside connection is there so I mean vehicles are seemingly just appearing on the map rather than having to rely solely on some sort of harbor and having to have some sort of uh, outside connection through a bridge which is great because you can barely see these guys they're just sort of hidden there and plus our clouds are turned off if I was to go through and add in our clouds then they are well and truly hidden which is super cool and I think this is such a great starting point for our city we know where a lot of these highways are going to go we've got a bit of an idea where our main roads are also going to sit and even our train line it's going to move slightly and I'm going to change a couple of things here and there but it's great to see its path so we can start figuring out where the train lines are going to sit and where some of the industry is also going to be weaved into the city. Next week, we're going to be jumping into the save game and figuring out the road layout of the city, thinking about where some of the more important parts are going to sit and moving in some residents. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll see how far we get. Um, but for now, guys, thank you all so much for watching today's episode. It is very much appreciated. And a big thank you to my patrons for making videos like this possible. Criminals, Toby Brown, Garrett Day, Derek Vidal, Jeremy Carroll, Cesare Grossi, Wayne Peter, W Tiger TW, Toby Cruz, Green Ree, Darren Morrissey, Janik F, Stephen Zolls, and Jack Wren. Big thanks to you guys, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye. <laughs>